speak into the telephone. <laughs> Now yes. Take it away, Lyda the orchestra leader. <laughs> okay, hi, I'm Lyda Whiting, um, and I have been an office manager for the last about 30 years. So I'm here to talk to you about um, some of the computer etiquette in a working situation that um, you may not, nobody may have told you at this point. I know when I started, nobody told me. So <laughs> it's better to know, you know. So one of the first things is, I know you guys have learned how to use Word and Excel and um, PowerPoint. But one of the things I want to talk to you about is emailing in a work situation. So it's really important when you're in a work situation that you be very careful what you email. Um, read it over twice before you send it. And make sure that your meaning is very clear. Um, don't use all caps, because when you use all caps, especially in a business, it sounds good. People think you're shouting at them. So that's a bad idea. Um, if it's a very delicate situation for some reason, a disagreement about how things should be gone or something, it's often better to do that in person. But if you need an email, it's a good idea to write the email and wait till the next day to send it and read it over the next day just to make sure um, that it's a common, reasonable email. Um, I've known people who got fired for dashing something off right away, and it sounded hostile and angry, and we don't have that. Um, so that's very important. And the other thing that's really important is if you're friends with some of the people you work with, which we all hope we are, right? Um, it's better not to put anything personal on email. Remember that even if you delete it off your computer and they delete it off their computer, the IT guys can still recover it. So it's permanent and so Email, anything on the computer, it's a very bad idea to put anything about your boss or the way the company is run or, you know, save that for when you go to lunch with your work friends. <laughs> you know, check, make sure no managers are in the place where you're eating and then go for it. You know? um, I also know one of my best friends um, was forced to resign because of that. So, um, that does happen. They can pull it all so they can see the whole string of emails where your friend sends you, well, I can't believe the boss did that. What a jerk. And even if you just reply back, yeah, then you're guilty too, um, <laughs> as far as you know, HR is concerned. So that's an important thing to remember. The, another important thing to remember is when you're looking for a job, you want to make a professional email account for just that. Like, you don't want your email account to be, um, you know, party till I puke dot com or something. You know, you, you just, the best thing is probably to just use your name, your first name and your last name at whatever, you know, you can get a free one so that it's, just more professional on your resume and then when you go in and they email you and they're not going, wow, I guess this person is a real party animal, look at their... It's weird, but HR, when they're looking at people to hire, they look at stuff like that. It's kind of strange, but um, while you're looking for a job, you also want to be careful because now um, HRs are starting to check Facebook and stuff. So um, not a great idea to post a bunch of 
you know, party pictures during your job search. After you're done searching, you're probably okay, but um, nobody thinks to tell people these things, but it's an important thing. Um, and then when you first start a job, well, obviously when you're going for the interview, you want to dress really professional, like extremely boring professional, like, you know, like you're going to somebody's wedding or funeral or something. Um, I always tell people, think about, you don't want anything that will give them an excuse to say no. So wear a jacket, wear a tie, you know, wear slacks, don't wear jeans. Surprisingly, some people will, the jeans will freak them out. It's kind of crazy, but it's true. <laughs> Um, and then take another copy of your resume or your CV in with you when you go, because um, that seems to impress them. Remember to write a thank you letter afterwards. And when you're applying for jobs, you can use the um, mail merge that um, Mary has taught you how to do mail merge on Word, so you can use that so that you can write, you can personalize every letter you send. People really like it when they see the letter from you and it has their name on it, instead of to whom it may concern. And if it doesn't say in the job listing, then just call and ask the receptionist or whoever answers the phone, who should I make this out letter out to? And they'll tell you their name. Um, so that's important. It's also important to remember that whatever you do on the computer, Every keystroke you do on the work computer is saved into the main uh, computers, even if you erase it, so IT can still look at that. So don't play games on your work. I've known people who got fired for that, too, for playing games on their work computer or um, doing their own personal stuff on their, on their work computer. So remember mm -hmm. that they can look at all that stuff. You know, when you own the company yourself, you can do whatever you want. But <laughs> until then, it's, it's important to remember that IT can go in and watch and look at everything if HR tells them to. So even small companies can do that. Um, so that's important. Um, and also, you probably already know, don't use your cell phone at work. Don't, you know, it's not the time. Um, if you need to take a call or make a call, take a break and go out of the building so that people aren't like, oh, come, you know, why are they calling the babysitter when they're supposed to be working? Or why are they calling, you know, their mom or whatever? Um, at different places, they're different about that, but those are my recommendations from having been an office manager and also having been in HR and watched people get fired for things that seem like they shouldn't get fired for, but that's what happens. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, then when you get the job, which will happen right away, I'm sure, um, for like the first couple weeks, dress a little bit up, you know, more than the people who work there for five or ten years, because people tend to get a little sloppy. You want to make a really good impression those first couple weeks, and after that you can probably relax, depending on where it is. And I don't know, engineering firms may be more relaxed. I've worked at some where they were very relaxed about the dress code and others where they weren't. Um, I myself got sent home one day for wearing the wrong shirt. That was a shock. <laughs> so, um, Well, it did say, screw the police. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why they were upset about that, you know. Um, <laughs> Seemed fine to me. I didn't think it was a political statement, like they said. But yeah. um, 
but yeah, you got to think about things like that, which is weird but true. Um, I've worked for bosses who cared a lot how clean your desk was. And I've worked for other bosses who couldn't have cared less, and they, they probably couldn't even find their desk under their paperwork. So um, I worked with nuclear engineers who ran the San Onofre power plant in California. And the joke at that office was you could tell how long somebody, an engineer, had been in the office by how much paper was piled in his cubicle. The longer he'd been there, the more paper he had. But I've also worked for people who found it really annoying if you had even a plant on your desk. So um, kind of check around. Let's see, what other, what other words of wisdom can I pass on to you guys? Um, when you're doing a, a spreadsheet or you're, whatever you're doing, Try, if you have time, try to check it over. It's really easy, especially when you're new in the office, to get distracted and make a mistake that's something that you would catch if you read it over, especially if you're writing something. Because somebody can come up and talk to you, and then you go back to your, what you're working on, and you forget that you didn't put that sentence in that explained everything. And then people get the memo, the document, they're like, what? I don't understand. Um, and when you are writing, the best way to write in an office is to be very clear and direct. Don't use a lot of flowery language. Don't use a lot of big words that you don't need to use. Just make it very clear exactly what you say instead of some people like to put big words in because they think it makes them look like they're smarter but the possibility is that the person reading it might not even know what that word is exactly <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's just easier to simplify it um, and also nobody has time to read a long thing so the shorter you can make it the better But that's really important. Um, the more important it is, if it's a really important document that you're working on, it's never a bad idea to have somebody look it over. Somebody <clears throat> has clearance to read whatever you're working on. If it's you know going to the executive team or something. And especially with your resume and your CV and your cover letter absolutely have someone else read it because they might catch something that you missed because you've been writing it you've you've been writing it you've rewritten it 50 times you you know you're not seeing the words as much anymore so it's and that's the kind of thing that people in hr the hr assistant is told read them all and throw away all the ones with with typos so I mean, your resume can end up right in the trash because you had one stupid typo. Um, I've seen that happen, and I've been told to do that myself. <laughs> so just make sure it's, it's as clean as you can get it. Have somebody read it over for you who's good at, you know, grammar and writing and stuff because they might catch something that you missed. Um, because that's a dumb reason to not get an interview because you know, your letter has a typo in it. That that'd be frustrating. <laughs> um, let's see. And personally, I like to print everything out and read it on paper before I send it. Just because you see it different when you read it on paper rather than on the computer. And you might catch that little weird, oh, I didn't delete that whole word. There's like three letters left sticking out over there. Or, and also, it's very important when you're doing spreadsheets, print it out and see how it 
prints because it's very annoying to get a spreadsheet that someone hasn't checked how it prints on the page and so you get 20 pages where there's one column on each page and that happens a lot so print it out and look at make sure that it all fits on the page or however many pages and that it looks okay um, I know um, the the graphs and charts that you guys have already learned how to do in, in Excel um, they're really simple especially for engineers to do um, but a lot of management people are really impressed that you can do that. So if you can put one in your, your report, then do it, you know. Um, I, I had one boss that just, I did a line graph and, oh, she just freaked out. She thought that was the greatest thing. She didn't even know you, it was possible to make line graphs. So. Um, so if you can do that, then that's really a good thing to put in there. Um, what else can you do to impress your new bosses? <laughs> Eric, you got any ideas? Um, then what else? So then the other things to consider in your um, in your computer working. If you do get an email where somebody says something derogatory or bad about one of the bosses or one of your coworkers or anything, don't respond to that email at all. Just delete it. I mean, if that's one of your friends who sent that, you can always talk to them later and say, hey, don't send me that stuff. That'll, that'll get us in trouble. Like I said, that's you talk about that at lunch or after work. Making sure that none of the people you work with are in the bar that you're at or whatever. Because um, I have known many people who got in trouble for that. And you don't want to get called in front of HR for something stupid like that. I think what other things from my 30 years of experience would be helpful for you guys. Um, Sometimes you work as teams, putting together a report. And when that happens, you want to read through the whole report and make it sound, it, it needs to sound like it all came from one person. Um, I worked on one report for the nuclear engineers where um, they each had written their part and I put it together and changed it so that it sounded like it was one voice, just one person talking, writing, instead of there were six different engineers and each one wrote in their own style and some of them it was, they, there was one guy who used really long words, all his sentences were forever, they were like a paragraph long. Nobody wants to read a paragraph, a sentence. Um, and then there was one guy who wrote it real casually. Hey, yeah, well, I, I went into I went over there and I talked to those guys and I and and this is what they told me and it was just way too casual. It was like it would have been fine if he'd been talking to other people, but it was kind of funny to have it in the report. So that's something if that comes up, I'm assuming that will come up writing reports together. Right. Um, and, oh, one of the other things that's really important is to be on time for not just when you come to work, but also when you have to go to a meeting. Especially the more important people are, the more they care about that, it seems like. So don't be the guy that's always, don't be the person that's always, uh, you know, 10 minutes late. Only, only the higher up managers can do that, and they do. So you, you might be sitting there for ten minutes, but at least you know you're you're there. Um, 
So, <laughs> um, so that's an important thing as well. And you know, being on time when you come back from lunch, because there's always somebody in the office who like pays attention to that. It's really annoying. Um, <laughs> but there's always somebody who's like. Now that person was five minutes late from lunch every day this week. And, you know, often when, you, when you're when you working in an office with a bunch of other people, um, there are people who are officially in charge, you know, with the title and everything, but then there are other people who have, I want to call it invisible power. <clears throat> um, so sometimes that's the secretary or the assistant of the, the head person. Sometimes it's somebody else. Uh, often it's one of the office assistants or um, coordinators. So as soon as you figure that out, make friends with that person. Because <laughs> that person um, they're the one who tells the boss what's really going on in the office. Because, you know, every time the boss comes through the office, everybody's, oh, we're all working very carefully, and, and no one's on, you know, private phone calls, and everybody's behaving well. And, but this other person, the invisible power person, is watching you all the time. So, um... I've known people who lost jobs because that person decided they didn't like them. And so they kept telling the bosses little niggling things about them. That's, hopefully that won't happen to you, but um, it makes for a very uncomfortable workplace when someone's doing that. Um, but since you're engineers, you can always go somewhere else and be an engineer there. So, <laughs> not like me being an office person, it just kind of stays. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Um, find out what. Um, this is another one of those weird things. Like the font that you write something in can matter to somebody higher up. So some offices have a couple fonts that they use all the time for everything. So if that's, find out if that is true and then just use that um, font. Um, otherwise, Arial or Times New Roman, either one of those is usually very acceptable. They're easy to read and everybody uses them. Sometimes they have other things they want to do, with, especially in PowerPoint. Some people, when they're making PowerPoint spreadsheets, that office likes to use a lot of like gimmicks where it slides across or it fades out or all kinds of stuff. And, but most offices don't do that because most people don't know how to do that in PowerPoint. Uh, so, you know, it can make your PowerPoint presentation more interesting, but it can also be distracting if you do. And also some Offices use like little cartoons or something, little clip art things, and others hate that. So you can kind of tell by just watching the other s presentations, you'll know what is kind of expected in that place. Because if they don't like cartoons and you have little cartoon people jumping out at them, they're gonna, that's not gonna be good. They're gonna think you're not taking it seriously. Whereas other people like that because it keeps everybody awake during the presentation. Um, and when you're printing things out, make sure you print your presentation, your slideshow out as well. And then, like, go ahead and project it and see, can you read that chart? 
you know, is it too much for a slide for people to watch? It's different if you're giving them the slides to read as well, but if they are just looking at it in a meeting, if it's too complicated, if, if they can't read it, they won't get what you're trying to tell them. Then again, with some engineers, they want it to be as complicated as, as possible because it's it's more engineering. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, so kind of gauged by what's going on in, in the office or the place that you are. Has got any questions for me at this point? Mm -hmm. Exciting things. Um, I will also tell you that in different office situations, different places, um, the amount of personal information that you share. It's very important that you realize that's up to you. You do not have to tell them if you're married or single or if you have children or if anything about your personal life. If you want to keep that private, keep it private. Um, people will chat with you and try to get information, but it's none of their business unless you feel like sharing it with them. So. Um, and of course, I'm sure you know that there are rules about what they can ask you in an interview. They can't ask your age. They can't ask you if you have a car. They can't ask anything about your sexual orientation or anything like that, or your religion, or your ethnicity. None of that's any of their business, and there are laws saying that they can't even ask you that. Um, Sometimes people try to get around that somehow by chatting with you, but you do not have to share it. You, you, you have the right to not share any of that with them. Um, and you can continue to not share that after you're hired. That's your choice, because that's your personal business. They don't have to know anything about your private life, because all they really should care about is your work. But people, even people who are trained in HR, or at least have the title that they're in HR, um, will sometimes forget that there are laws about what they can ask you. So um, if they do ask you something that you don't want to answer, like what, um, like your religion, you can just look at them puzzled and say, um, I don't really think that that's an appropriate question, is it? And usually that reminds them that, oh yeah, they weren't supposed to ask that question in the first place. Um, so if they, if they keep pushing you on any of that stuff, you probably don't want to work there anyway because they're not following the law and that's no good. So don't let them talk you into telling you telling them things you don't want to share. Um, so they can ask you, for example, they can ask you, will you be able to have transportation to get to work every day? But they can't say, do you know, own a car? So, because that's none of their business if you own a car or not. Or who you live with or how far away you live. You know, you apply for the job, obviously you want to work there. If you're up for an hour drive every day, it's none of their business, you know. So, that's an important thing. And especially in smaller companies, the person who's interviewing you may not be as aware of the law as they should be. Um, but it does always work to just say, I'm sorry, I don't, 
I can't. I, I don't want to answer that question. I don't think you're legally allowed to ask me that question. And then they'll usually back off because they they're like, oh, oh no no yeah. They don't want you to call, you know, somebody and turn them in for, you know, doing it wrong. Um, and that's something to think about when you write your resume too. Um, you don't want to put in the like some people put a, like a personal section on the on their resume or on their CV. It says something about whether they're married and if they have kids and stuff like that. And don't don't do that. Don't put that on. Um, you know, when you're working there and you become friends with people, then if you want to, you can share that kind of information. But don't put that on your, they shouldn't be looking, that that shouldn't be there. Because um, that should not have any impact on whether or not they hire you. They should be hiring you based on your experience and your education in the field. You know, if you Fit 10 years as a circus performance performer before you become an engineer, you do not have to put that on your resume if you want to. And they'll ask you all kinds of questions about fire reading. And, you, know, you don't want to deal with that. So, anyway. Um, it's very important to remember when you're in an office that, or with work people, that there are always people listening, and there will be gossip, and just don't join in, just because it, it never, it's never good when people start gossiping about other people in the office and saying. I don't know, she looks like she's gained weight, you think she's pregnant? This is very bad, this can get you fired right away. Even if you just say, yeah, I don't know, and the, you know, the, you can, it still can get you in trouble. Um, just say, I don't think we should talk about that person that way, or, or just walk away or whatever. Because um, people can get fired for that kind of thing. And then you won't get to show off your awesome engineeringness. And that would be bad. Um, and so those are some things that I wish somebody had told me when I first started working, and nobody did. <laughs> and so hopefully that will be helpful for you to just know those things going in. Especially now with the technology, you know, growing the way it is and everybody's got their phone all the time and everybody's got texts and stuff coming in and it's it's really easy to get distracted away from um, your focus on your work and so, um, and yet, if people see you looking at your phone all the time, even if it's somebody texting you about work, it can, it can leave a bad impression. Um, so, most work communication will probably come through email anyway. Um, so that's probably better because then it's obviously work. Hmm. What about off-site situations? Like if you go off-site um, for a work function, like a, par like a party or something? Yeah. That, uh, yeah, when you're, um, say they have a holiday party in December or something, when you go to that, you need to remember that in a way you're still at work. Don't drink very much or at all. 
um, and be careful what you say and do because you're still with the people who make the decisions about whether or not you have your job the next Monday. So it's, it's really important not to, like, you want to get wild and crazy, that's something to do with your friends, not at a work party or sometimes um, some office, some pl places have, like they'll have a, a, a summer picnic or they'll have, well not during COVID, but you know, after COVID's over, or they'll have, um, they're like, hey, we're all going to go bowling, you know, whatever. And a lot of people, some offices, some bosses are really into that kind of stuff because they think it's team building. So they, it makes you guys a better team that you went bowling together or something. Or played, um, you know, baseball together or some, I don't know, whatever weird thing the boss is into. Usually it's them that's controlling it. But remember that it's still a work function. So you should still dress, you could dress more casual, but it should still be professional. Once again, it is not time to wear the t-shirt that says, you know, what was it, something about the police that you said earlier? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a time to wear like a political statement t-shirt or a, something like that. Um, and even if it's, say, you're going to the park in the summer and you're going to wear shorts, well, you want to make sure they're still, you know, covering what needs to be covered. Um, you want to be too revealing, that's important. Um, and sometimes they have these functions where they invite families to come along, which is fine, but the significant other or whoever you take with you also needs to remember this is not the place to drink too much or to be, you know, wild and crazy. Because you don't, people do judge you based on who you brought to the company picnic. And so, if, you know, if your significant other just can't control it, this is like, be them at home, maybe. <laughs> or you're, you know. And some of those things are optional. Some of those holiday parties or company picnics or whatever those kind of things are optional. But it's, it's a, it could be a really good idea to at least show up, even if you only stay half an hour, you know. And you can always come up with a good excuse, you, you know. You need to go. Um, take care of your aging grandmother or something. Um, but at least if you show up, it makes you more of a team player or something. And in some offices, that's really important. Some, some places, they don't do that kind of stuff at all. But I've worked at places where that was a huge thing. And somebody who always said no to any of that, it kind of lowers their chances of you know, moving on with the, with the company, sadly. It shouldn't matter, but sometimes it does. So, important. Of course, if the, you know. Um, and then there are other things that like, they're like, well, let's all get together and we'll all go do something and it'll cost this much. If it, cost money, you, you can probably bow out. You know, if they are all decide they're going to go to the opera and you're not into the opera, you don't have to go. Once again, use that aging grandmother excuse. You know, you, you really have to be there for her that night. you got to take her to her bingo or whatever. You know. Even if you don't have a grandmother, you can still use that excuse. <laughs> um, what else? You're not surely not encouraging these guys to lie. No, don't lie. <laughs> Very good. No, I would suggest that you, if you're at one of those offices, one of those companies that they do a lot of stuff like that, you need to participate in a third of them at least. 
don't always say no, even if you hate bowling, you know. Go once in a while, just so that you're part of the team. And it does give you a chance to get to know the other people you work with. Um, I know one person that I worked with never participated in any of those like, team building activities. And he was very negative about the fact that they you know, even had them. And it did affect his career. So. Um, when it came time to downsize, guess who got downsized? That wasn't the only reason that he got to leave, but it was one of the factors, I think, just as a personality thing that people felt like he wasn't dedicated enough or something. So. What about when you're out representing the company? Oh. If you're out representing the company, say you're going out um, to a trade show or um, anything like that, or you go to a, a convention where a lot of other people are, remember that you are representing that company, you're the company that you work for. Um, sometimes they'll give you like a shirt that you, you need to wear that shirt. But if, you know, like, that has the company name on it. Um, but if they don't, just, you know, dress nicely because you're representing the company. You don't want it to get back that, wow, your people seemed really casual about everything. You know, and always, always speak well of the company. Never say anything negative about your company in one of those situations, if you're at a meeting or a convention or, or you're working maybe with another company on a project, never say anything bad about your, it will get back to the bosses, absolutely. They will hear those comments. Um, but they will also hear, wow, your people really dedicated. They, they really, they know their stuff and they, they really talk your company up, you know, so they'll hear that feedback too. Never forget that the bosses at a lot of these companies, they may know each other from school or from other meetings, the other conventions they've been to. So they have at least, so you don't want one guy going up and saying, hey, you know, your, your, pers your engineer was saying this about your company. You, you, you know, if, they're going to say that you want to do something good. <laughs> and also, for those things, it's important to show up on time. If you're, if you're at a convention and you're going to um, a lecture or a meeting or whatever, don't be that person who comes in 15 minutes late and that kind of interrupts everything. Be there, be there on time. And sometimes you might want to take notes or not. I found sometimes, um, I mean, I'll tell you one of my secret, one of my secret things. I used to work for a car company, and I was an uh, office person in the service section. So when they got to the service presentation, I had it memorized because I was the one who wrote it. <laughs> so it wasn't new information for me. And when they got to the sales presentation, I didn't really care because that wasn't my part of the company. So what I would do is always take a notebook and a pen and look like I was taking, because these meetings were like a whole day of, of people doing boring presentations. Take a notebook and a pen and at least look like you're right, taking notes. Sometimes I used to um, write letters to friends. <laughs> but um, because, like I said, I knew what was in half of the presentations. And the other half, they were telling me how many cars they'd sold. And I didn't really care that much. But 
At least that way you look like you're participating. Even if you're just doodling, it's better than yawning or nodding off. You do not want to fall asleep in one of those meetings. You know, you, that, that would be really bad. Because if the one meeting that you doze off in will be the one that your boss is sitting across the room and you didn't notice. And they'll see you. It's very bad. So yeah, treat any um, off-site things. Even if, if you're going to a site to, to walk through, like if you're walking through a plant or whatever kind of thing, remember that you're still representing that company and it's going to get back to them how professional you were. So professional is important. Anything else I should mention? The, um, Talk more about working, uh, uh, working off-site at a, another business or... Working off-site at, yeah, if you're, if you're going and, um, you're going to work off-site at another location, or at another company, um, or maybe you're collaborating with, with another team, it's important to remember that that is a chance for you to make some business, some, some work contacts, and make a good impression on them. You never know when they might have an opening that you might be interested in. So. Remember that they might remember that, oh, when they see your resume, oh, yeah, he was here last year. He did such a good job working with us. He was so professional. That's the kind of thing that, that's the reputation you want to get. Even if you never work at that company, some of the people there might be at the next company you work at because people move around. So. You know, do the whole dressing professionally, acting professionally, speaking well of your company and your managers. And, you know, this is not the time to be like, oh, my managers, he doesn't understand engineering at all. This is very bad for your career. Don't ever do that. That's something you go home and talk to your friends about. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't bring that up in a work context because you don't know if that person might, they might have been roommates in, at university, you know, with your boss. You don't know. They could, you know, could be the guy, the person's brother-in-law or sister-in-law or something. So don't, you know. Obviously, that's, you got to be careful about stuff like that. If each, each kind of company I've worked in a lot of different kinds of companies. And each kind of company, what I found is that the people in that industry tend to know each other. So they do, people in engineering do know each other from conventions and meetings and working together. And maybe they worked together in another place before. And, um, and you know, so it's really important that you make that you're very careful when, when you're at working with another team from another company, or you know, maybe you guys are collaborating, or you're whether whatever kind of off-site thing you're doing. Even if it's just you're going on a tour of this plant so that you can see how they run things, when you're there is not the time to say, wow. You guys do this part really terribly. Why? Why do you do it this way? This is, this is not, the right way to do it. That is not the time to say something like that. Um, to the people who work there, they they do not want to hear that from you or from anybody. Um, even if you're a consultant going in to assist them with what they do and to make it better. Um, you still want to bring up 
positive points of what they do, what they're doing right as well. And then when you get to be a big wig, then you can, then you can, I don't know, go in and tell them what they're doing wrong. But then you can be in, as insulting as you want? Uh... Um, no, I have known some CEOs who felt that way, but they were wrong. <laughs> Um, the thing that nobody tells you, I think, in business is that being nice, being polite, actually really helps your career a lot. And people will remember that. <coughs> people will remember if you go in there and you say good morning to the receptionist and remember her his name, that will be remembered. And there have been times when I was sitting at that front desk. Remember that you don't know who's sitting at that front desk. You don't know what their title is. You don't know how important they are. You don't know if they're the confidant of the CEO of the company. The nicer, you know, just be pleasant to them. And be pleasant to the other people that you interact with. And then that way, when they leave, they'll all go, well, nice person, want to work with them again. And that's the impression you want to leave. And they really know their stuff. That, that's coming from you know, your classes and your experience and your education. But you also want to be known as, nobody wants to work with somebody who's difficult. You know. Sometimes people, I mean, I have worked with many people who were difficult. I worked with a person who used to throw a stapler across the room. Don't do that. <laughs> he used to have temper tantrums. And, you know, eventually nobody wants to work with you. People leave. They don't, they don't want to deal with it. So, you know. It's important. It seems weird, but the more personable you are, nice people really do rise to the top. Some of the nicest people that I've known were way at the top of the companies. And that personality trait helped get them there. That not everybody has figured that out. As main, you, you may find many middle management people who haven't figured that out yet. But through my career, I've seen that those middle management people who were rude and obnoxious and threw their staplers across the room and had tantrums, they do not move anywhere else. They stay there. They never move up. And they often get laid off when the company cuts back. They're like, yeah, this is a good time to get rid of, you know, that person. They're not any, we don't like working with them. So, you know, I guess it's, it's like, you know, your first grade teacher used to tell you to be nice. <laughs> That's, you know, it actually helps you. Talk about company culture. Oh, the company culture. Um, each company has its own culture, its own way of doing things. Um, some places are very relaxed and informal. Everybody, even the CEO, gets called by his by her first name. You know, people are relaxed and they may wear jeans to work all the time and. Um, and then some companies are much more formal. People, um, you know, people are more kind of, they dress, they may dress up more, they may be more formal talking to each other. Some, some companies, the culture is that, you know, the managers leave their doors open and 
if their doors open, you can go in and talk to them. And in some companies, even if their doors open, you do not interrupt them. You you have to set up a meeting before you go talk to them. You don't just walk wander into their office. So it. It's really important to figure out the culture when you first get there. Um, find out, you know, observe the interactions of the people. Watch how people treat each other. You know, when the CEO comes in or the, or the big man, head honcho, whoever, whatever, or um, whoever is high up in the company, when they come in, um, See if people call them, you know, by their first name. Do they say, hi, Sharon, or do they say, good morning, Ms. Smith, you know? And that is, that those kind of things can be really important. Weirdly, those, that is, is, figuring out their culture is as important as the work you actually do. And in some companies, maybe even more important. So, Pay attention to that and so that you can fit into that. So if they're all saying, good morning, Miss Smith, and that's that's what you do. If everybody's calling them by a first name, but don't call them by their first name until you've been introduced to them. You know. Um, if, if you haven't been introduced to whoever it is, because you don't know if this person is somebody that they've worked with for 20 years, and so it's okay for that person to call her Sharon, but everybody else calls her Miss Smith. Um, it's it's probably better to err on the more formal side, and then they'll say, "Oh no, call me Sharon. Call me no. Nobody calls me Miss Smith. You know, it's okay." And then you'll know for sure. Um, the other parts of the company culture, like I was saying, some companies have a lot of team building kind of things. They all go, they have picnics, they, they, um, some companies they all, you know, they may go out to dinner together sometimes or whatever. And there can be many cultures within that, like your engineering team within the company may have their own things that they always do. Like maybe they always, um, they take turns bringing donuts on Mondays or something like that. Um, things like that, it's weird, but it's important to participate in stuff like that. Because you don't want to be, then you don't want to be like, man, he never, he never, bring, he's, he never takes his turn to bring donuts, so I don't know, you know. Um, but the other part of the culture is also how they, how, how they interact with each other. Like, does everybody go out, do people go out to lunch together? Or do they just scatter? Um, I've worked at companies where it was both ways. I've worked at companies where it's lunchtime, you clock out, you just go. And other ones where they all kind of like hang together, have lunch together a couple times a week or something. Um, so you want to fit into that um, culture. Is there anything else I should say about that? You think? Does that cover it? I don't know. Do you feel like you've covered it? <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's that's pretty much. It's it can be tricky when you first start, and like I said, it's always better at the beginning to be more formal rather than less. You don't want to be like, hey George, and it turns out that. Everybody calls him Mr. Jones, and you're the one who called him Hey George, and you don't want to be like that. But um, you have to pay attention to everybody else. And one of the things that helps is, um, like, you can ask other people who've been there. And if, if you're not comfortable asking the other engineers, you can always ask the office assistant or office manager or whoever that person is, you know, is it, would this be appropriate? And they'll know for sure um, whether it's going to be appropriate or not for the office. 
There's a, like I said, there's always somebody in the office who has more power than you think they are, they have. Um, so watch for that. You'll figure it out really quick because it will be really obvious after, after a few days. You'll figure out that this you know, person who's assistant to this manager is the one who knows everything that's going on in the office and reports back to, I've been that person many times. Um, <laughs> and sometimes I haven't been that person at all and I've been out of the loop. But um, you just want to make sure you're fitting in a bit. I mean, you don't have to change your personality, but you want everyone to know that you're glad you work there, that you're glad to spend time with these people, at least during work time. However, you're not required to, you know, be best friends with everybody. I did work one place where they had a questionnaire that they you had to fill out every year, and one of the questions was, you know, true or false, I have a best friend at work. And that was just like, we were all like, why did they ask that question? What is that telling them that they want to know? I don't know. Um, it was a strange question, that was a strange place to work. Um, And I guess, hopefully that helps, makes it easier, like that transition. As I know, you know, when I was in school, and then I left school and went to my first job, nobody had told me any of this stuff. I mean, I hope this is helpful for you guys, so that at least you'll be thinking about some of these things when you go out there and when you're interacting. and. When you're interacting, even just with, even if you go to, like, say, a meeting or a sem, say you go to a seminar, and it's not actually connected to, to like, you're just going for yourself to learn this, and it's not a work-sponsored thing. Still, at that seminar, that at that engineering seminar, you still want to present yourself as a professional. You never know. One of these people could be interviewing you for a job someday, or could be working at the desk next to you. So that's all important stuff there. Yeah. I think I, I can't think of anything else. Fantastic. Unless anybody has any. Yes? Oh, yes, that's true. That's true. I have worked places that are both. There are, there are places where they, they really just want you to, even when you're communicating with someone else who speaks the other language that you speak besides English, um, they don't like it if, you, if you're not speaking English. They feel like I've worked places where people got really upset about that, like, like you were talking about them or something. And then I've worked at other places where multilingual is fine. There's, there may be three or four different conversations in different languages going on around you. Um, so that's something to watch as well, as, as that's a, another part of the culture that you need to pick up on. Are they? Are they cool with that, or does that kind of make them feel like, why aren't you speaking English? Is, are you saying something that the rest of us shouldn't know? And I've worked places where they got really suspicious about that, um, even though more than half the staff might have spoken Spanish or, or whatever other language, but still, they still wanted everybody to speak in English in the office all the time. So that, you're right, that's a good question. That's a, that's a good, um, that's something to watch for when you're
first there in the first like week or so, you, you'll probably figure it out pretty quickly whether it's okay or not. It should always be okay, but sometimes it isn't. <laughs> you know, unfortunately. Any other questions? Um, okay. okay. Well, let me take over and drive for a moment. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget your mask. Oh. Thank you for that. Okay, so uh, uh, that was uh, my sister, the famous uh, uh, office manager and all around good person. Uh, who uh, uh, was uh, uh, giving her uh, 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 giving us some pointers on working in the world and uh, and what goes on there? Uh, so for uh, quiz number fourteen, kind of write up a little half page on what you feel like you got out of this, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, okay, so I will, I will put that as uh, uh, on Moodle with this uh, videotape. Any questions? Okay, well, I'm going to take that as no questions. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for tuning in for today's exciting class. And uh, now remember, this is the last class. After this, you need to get your report and your PowerPoint together on your article and clean up any outstanding homework or quizzes and uh, turn those in. All right, one last chance to ask any questions. Uh, all right, remember you can always send me an email uh, about uh, what's going on and what you need to do. All right, well, thank you very much. Have fun now. Bye. All right, gentlemen, uh, you're, uh, we're wrapping up a little tiny bit early. Um, But uh, thank you so much for trudging through the snow to come here today. Yes.